Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and before we get started, I'm going to front load a statement for those Xbox One X owners out there in regards to the game in question, Red Out Lightspeed Edition. The topic surrounds the concept that the game does not run in 4K 60fps, which it was confirmed by VG Tech in a subsequent video that the game does upscale to 4K resolution. That said, the game on your screen is Red Out. It is a racing game that serves as an homage to older style racers like F-Zero and Wipeout. For mediocre racers like myself, it is a game genre that can be somewhat challenging until one learns the tracks and their individual peculiarities. From what little of the game that I've played so far, I've found the mechanics to be quite solid, as well as the game's upgrades and the nature of racing games in general lend themselves well to an extreme amount of replayability. Of course, I purchased the game and played a little of it on PC for the sake of this video. As I do not own an Xbox, I cannot independently confirm nor refute any statements made by the game's developers, VG Tech, or anyone else in regards to the console version of the game, so please bear that in mind that any statements of resolution or performance have not been verified by me in that regard. Red Out was released on Steam in September of 2016, where it was very well received, although in recent days the game's developers, 34 Big Things, have come under a certain amount of attention, as it has been reported that they have claimed to be threatening legal action against Digital Foundry for their recent video and Eurogamer article that was released over the weekend, in which they compared the PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X versions of the game. In the written article, the publication wrote, Not every release for Xbox One X can be a winner, but we genuinely expected more from Red Out Lightspeed Edition. The potential is certainly there. The original PC version of the game remains an excellent piece of work, but it's clearly a demanding title for consoles. Only the PlayStation 4 Pro version can consistently deliver full 60fps gameplay. According to Microsoft's X Enhanced Games list, Red Out should be delivering Ultra HD 4K on the new console. It's not, but that's actually the least of its issues. As one might expect from a very negative article from what a great many people consider to be an extremely trusted source, 34 Big Things received a wave of negative criticism over Digital Foundry's claims of Red Out's 1080p resolution and an unstable frame rate on the Xbox One X. As a result of that negative feedback, 34 Big Things founder Valerio Di Donato wrote the following in an official statement. Nicest part of a cloudy Saturday morning? Waking up to a shitstorm raging upon you. Based on what we can call incompetent technical analysis at best, fake news at worst. Digital Foundry might have been a competent source of technical information in the past, but it might be currently going down the clickbaiting path. They just published an opinionated video on our game, Red Out, in which they talk about Xbox One X performances, frame rates, and resolution, mentioning over and over that Red Out shows a 1080p rendering for the Xbox One X versions. This is a pure, straight lie. The Xbox One X got an enhancement update a couple of weeks ago, which brings 4K rendering with dynamic resolution scaling to everyone, owners or not, of 4K TV. More specifically, we managed to scale the resolution between 90% and 50% of native 4K, which means the resolution goes from the upper limit of 3456 by 1944 to the lower one of 1920 by 1080, confirmed also by VG Tech. More technical details on this will follow in the next days when everybody will be back from holiday vacations, but meanwhile, let us spell it out, it's not 1080p. As many users reported, there are still some frame rate hiccups where the game can't keep the 60 FPS pace and significantly drops below the 45 plus threshold, which is something we are aware and very sorry of. This happens more frequently where many AI opponents are factored in while it's close to non-existent on time attacks, solo races, and races with few opponents. We are aware of these issues and will keep working on those as long as possible. But saying that Red Out renders at 1080p is plain false. This combined with the fact that some players seem to be highly sensitive to the Xbox vs PC performances tug of war caused a rain of negative comments on our heads all based on wrong information. Now at this point the news outlets are stating something different than what is in the official response currently. It appears from looking at snips taken from other outlets that what is currently stated as we are currently looking into various ways to defend our public image originally stated we are currently looking into legal action to defend our public image. It is very likely that the statement was altered after Digital Foundry took down their own video and issued a public apology to 34 Big Things for the negative attention their article attracted to the game's developers. 
Digital Foundry also stated that they would be revisiting the title and post a new version of the video as soon as they were able. However, it is the final statement made by Di Donato that many find to be troubling, in which it originally read, We are currently looking into legal action to defend our public image, not only because we dislike being called lazy or incompetent gratuitously, but also to send a message to the players and the industry. Game devs, indies especially, are amongst the most hardworking people, to the point that burnout and crunch culture in game development are widespread. Really, just stop calling them lazy to the first hiccup. And don't fabricate excuses for calling them lazy, okay? Thank you. And it is that response that struck very much of a person acting in a professional capacity while wearing their bruised ego very much on their sleeve. And as a result of that, I don't think that Di Donato is handling this situation appropriately. Sending a message to players and the industry that indie devs are not lazy by threatening legal action against a games critic that happened to make a mistake? Well, I can agree that will most certainly send a message all right, but I highly doubt it is at all the message you want to be sending. The Digital Foundry made a mistake. It happens to everyone once in a while. Even the most perfect among us still occasionally make mistakes. They owned up to it, issued an apology, and are actively working on correcting that mistake. There's really nothing more that can be done. Their systems seemed to be testing the base frame rate and resolution and did not appear to be taking upscaling into consideration, so their equipment provided them with partially false data. Also, it is at least somewhat possible that Digital Foundry had run tests on the game's resolution and frame rate prior to the Xbox One X December 15 patch, which introduced the 4K upscaling and 1080p super sampling for that console. If that is the case, then their tests were accurate at the time they were made and were only made outdated by that December 15 patch. If that is the case, then Digital Foundry have less to apologize for than they might think. It was still inaccurate information at the time of the video's release and as such was still a misrepresentation of the game, but it is at least possible. So while this possible explanation doesn't make their error less wrong, it at least offers a potential reason as to the how and the why the error occurred. That said, in the grand scheme of things, threatening legal action against a game's critic is an extremely petty, petulant, and rather childish reaction when faced with their apologizing and doing what they can to make sure the issue is corrected. And to be bluntly honest, burnout and crunch culture should not be used as a testimony for how hardworking games developers are, but rather should be held up as the edifices of many of the glaring issues that are prevalent within the culture and the industry of games development. I can definitely understand one's desire to stand up for oneself and your coworkers and friends, but to lash out in this way sets a very poor example for your mentality as a developer and will only serve to erode consumer trust. If D. Donato handled this with a bit more grace and kindly helped steer Digital Foundry in the right direction, it could have been a PR victory, further enhancing the word of mouth about the game, making sure accurate information got out to people, and showing your customers that you were fully capable of treating feedback, even negative criticism, with tact and grace. Such a mentality does a lot more to engender faith and trust than you might realize. At least, it would do so a good amount more than threatening to sue. As such, these developers might very well find that there will be fewer games critics willing to cover their games in the future as a result of this behavior, with a precedent set that this developer is willing to get litigious at the drop of a hat, there are many that will simply not take the risk for the sake of covering one video game. This will result in a marked decrease in visibility for any future titles by these developers which hurts the developers themselves. And also, it's a shame for an entirely different reason, that being the game itself is actually really good. I of course don't dare review it in any great detail as it would seem that any technical mistake could land me in the same boat as Digital Foundry. I know that's a bit cheeky, but it is a sample of what critics might very well be saying about future 34 Big Things titles. But as always, feel free to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Were 34 big things out of line to take things that far that quickly, or were they justified in threatening Digital Foundry with legal action? And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sidalfa, and I'll see you next time. If you like what I do on this channel and would like to see the channel go full time, consider donating in on Patreon or PayPal as well as hitting that subscribe button and following me on social media. Links to everything are in the description down below.